I want to get to this story briefly before we get to this sound. And this is a really actually important point of intervention. There is a debate that people ha can have about Antifa, its tactics, its ideology, and so on and so forth. It's an area that I am more sympathetic and supportive of Antifa than many, uh, but I understand the validity of some of the critiques, uh, and I don't think it's conceptually and intellectually above reproach. That said, Richard Spencer clip was one of the greatest things I've ever seen in my life, and more importantly, as soon as legislation like this happens, all the other nonsense goes out the window. This is actually an analog to why someone like me is like, all right, whatever, but now it's time to vote for Hillary in November. Because when greater threats appear, it doesn't mean that the debates and arguments go out the window, but it does mean in terms of primary focus of action and resources, the immediate threat needs to be addressed. And the immediate threat right now is a piece of legislation that Dan Donovan is proposing in the House of Representatives. He's a Republican who represents Staten Island, and I'm going to touch on, or I actually already teased it in the intro. He was previously a prosecutor who chose to not bring murder charges, or at the very least manslaughter charges, against the cop who choked out Eric Gar Garner on the street. That was, of course, the man who was selling loose cigarettes, who got put in a chokehold while police stood on and watched. Bystanders asked him to stop as he was clearly murdering and killing the guy. Uh, and Eric Garner uh, obviously was losing his life as the chokehold by the officer continued. This is the same guy that chose to not prosecute that crime. And he has now proposed a piece of legislation which, in po which quote unquote, this is from the Independent, imposes penalties on anyone who, quote, injures, oppresses, threatens, or intimidates, unquote, another person while wearing a mask or a disguise. Now, let's break this down. From a legal perspective, if you injure somebody else, if you oppress somebody else, I don't know what the hell that means, but let's start before we get to the nonsense. Injure somebody else is assault or battery of some sort. That's illegal, okay? So no need for new lawmaking there. And incidentally, if you're concerned about who's actually instigating violence in these conflicts, go look at the fascists, not the people resisting them. The capital murder that has come out of these conflicts so far was the death of Heather Hare by a young pro-Nazi activist aligned with the far right. Oppress, I don't know what that means. Maybe we're, now we're in intellectual dark web territory, like my freedom of speech. Which, you know, which means, of course, for these people, don't protest or question anything I say. So don't have a counter protest to my protest because you exercising your free speech would threaten my free speech. And then intimidate or threaten. Now, again, actually intimidate or threaten are both other things that if you actually clearly legally de demonstrated that, uh, those are actually things that are already on the books. So putting this disguise moniker is, first of all, People across the board wear disguises, so theoretically this could be used against right-wing forces. We know it's not going to be. Number two, it's obviously specifically targeted at a group like Antifa that is primarily publicly known for hiding their identities because they don't want to be doxxed by people that support Nazi policies, as an example. And it adds the type of vagueness of this writing, by the way, could literally mean anything. A disguise doesn't liter literally have to be a mask because you could just be, I don't know, wearing an outfit. Maybe like Matt goes to a protest and wears like a 1980s style Adidas tracksuit. I'm a furry. Yeah, maybe he's a furry. It doesn't, it's a, it's a, it doesn't mean a thing. But we all know how this legislation will be applied. And frankly, as a second order issue, more broadly, uh, this is a cooling effect on protests and public demonstrations of any sort, period, which everybody should oppose, frankly. That actually is an important principle that we should fight for. Yeah. But, the, yeah, go ahead. The penalties are absurdly stiff. Yeah, um, that's what well. I'm, oh, yeah, I'm going to. Sorry. People can uh, get up to 15 years in prison, 15 years in prison under this legislation by Donovan. So 
And then I just want to quote briefly uh, from a member, uh, a Janine Renee, who Cunningham was a member of the New York's Metropolitan Anarchist Coordinating Committee. This bill explicitly targets the tactics used by anti-fascists to protect themselves against the violence and harassment of far-right groups who routinely target them. As a result, it should be considered a tacit support of not only fascism, but also dangerous alt-right groups in this country. She's absolutely right. It's part and parcel of broader efforts that we saw at the state level, including legislation in North Dakota that was aimed at the uh, pipeline, Dakota Ackline pipeline protesters, which essentially said that if you got run over by a car protesting, that was legal, essentially. There's no recourse. There's other pieces of legislation on the state level uh, that essentially uh, target you for engaging in acts of civil disobedience or protests that could in any way affect businesses' profit margins. So in other words, it's like, yes, if you're protesting by, I don't know, say a Starbucks that has thrown out two black people who are waiting for two minutes before having a meeting, and then people go back to that branch to protest the racism of Starbucks, well, I guess theoretically somebody might say, oh, man, it looks like there's a big crowd around the Starbucks. I just needed to dunk in for a minute, grab a coffee, I'll go somewhere else. Under some of the interpretations of state statutes that they put forward, that could mean that the protesters could be, uh, at the very least, civilly liable with exorbitant fines for doing that. And that's why when you look at the type of nonsense and fear-mongering and fascist bleeding that somebody like Mike Huckabee did last week about his stupid daughter and about Democrats not respecting the results of the election. First of all, this is exactly what someone like Erdogan says in Turkey. There is an election day, you vote. When the vote's over, you shut the fuck up, period. The majority wins, that's it. That's it. And that is both profoundly anti-democratic and, in fact, even profoundly anti-liberal, if we're being honest about it. And then that number two, that whining and freaking out by Republicans about these acts of protests are not only their typical cultural agreement. They're going to be packaged with policy to criminalize dissent, which makes the New York Times editorial board, Washington Post, David Axelrod, like, you mm, can be nice and civil, that much more delusional and disgusting because this is actually in play. This shit isn't a debate about manners. You can oppose all this stuff if you want, but you if you don't understand the primary threat of a legislation like this, or even just the J20 protesters, where finally, a couple of days ago, the last charges were dropped against them, but that's still over a year of time of legal threats, wasted time, having your life be invaded for exercising your constitutional rights. Get in the game or shut up. And here are some people in the game these are people protesting Mike Pence, one of the most loathsome, loathsome people in the world, in Kansas City, Missouri, I believe. Is that right? Kansas City, Missouri. It is great to be back in Kansas City with men and women who elected a Congress and a president. And another important piece of First, protesting. I just comment on yeah, that. Go ahead. Every time that this response is prompted, that like somebody does something righteous, and the response of the crowd is "USA, USA." That there's something very uh, powerfully instructive about that. And right. So people should keep doing this sort of shit. Yeah, we're taking it back. Oh, and in case anyone is still confused as to whether this law specifically targets Antifa, there are specific carve-outs for cops. Because, as everyone knows, the cops are allowed to wear disguises and spy on protesters. Oh, if anything, this, this legislation, I'm sure, probably even has specific... I, there's going to be provisions to allow cops to be even more invasive 
of groups like that, which they already profoundly are, even pre-9-11, look at infiltration of the environmental and animal rights movement. And, well, sake. yeah, exactly. What we yeah. know about them taking yes. pictures of those sorts of organizers is that's obvious why they want the masks off, and that's obvious why the masks are there in the first place, and the masks should be allowed to fucking stay there. Precisely. Here's more people, though. I will say this is an example, if we want to quote future in a positive sense, mask off, effective protesting, the turtle, the arch scum of the United States Senate. He had a meal disrupted in Kentucky. Here's Mitch McConnell getting it from some people that care about basic human decency and democracy. <laughs> They're playing public enemy. It, it was a DJ, I think, that was wor- <laughs> meant to work at the club. It says on the sound sheet, actually. Hero. A bar trivia host recognized him and used his speaker to disrupt McConnell's dinner, playing the song Fight the Power by Hip Hop Group Public Enemy. <laughs> That's beautiful. That's, hey, you want to you wanna have an open air dinner. That's what you're going to get. Yeah. Listen to Fight the Power, asshole. All right. 